Good afternoon. Um, I will be short, I hope. Well, after the user transition from the Homo erectus to the Homo sapiens, rapidly the human mind acquired sophisticated skills. Anthropologists uh, have always searched the reason for, in that moment of the evolution, human skills earned such fantastic acceleration. That turn has been named the Neolithic Revolution. It began the ninth millennium before Christ, giving to humans the ability to cultivate the herd and to domesticate the animals. In the following few millennials, they implemented the phonetic language, the alphabet, the writing, until that step, the transition from the rectus to sapiens had lasted two million years. What did happen to humans fostering so strongly the evolution? Acutely, a study by Douglas McLeod brings uh, to synthesis several researches by Merlin Donald, Trevor Watkins, and others, exposing a brilliant theories. We are in the south of the Turkey now, uh, close to the Syrian border, uh, close to the city of San Lurfa. This is a Klaus Schmidt. Klaus Schmidt discovered um, Gobekli Tepe, an archaeological site, in the, the 90. Uh, the last century, and uh, work, uh, working a lot, discover uh, all the elements uh, earthed in, inside the lawyerings uh, science uh, 12, 12 millenniums. So um, this, this kind of archaeological um, discovery is being uh, defined in three as uh, composed by three different uh, phases. One, the first from the 10,000 800 years before Christ to the 8,200 years before Christ. We are in presence, in the presence of a first massive architecture designed by humans, um, 5,000 year, 5, years before the pyramid in Egypt. The Cla Klaus Smith thought this was uh, the site uh, devoted to this, to the reflect about the mystery of the death. If we want to, to grasp uh, the meaning of this kind of discovery, we have to ask the support of uh, the Merlin Donald theory about the mind evolution. Um, because uh, according to this kind of theory, uh, the development, the evolution of human mind is being composed by three, three different passages. The first from the episodic mind to the mythic, uh, the mimetic mind, from the mimetic to the mythic, and from the mythic from the theoretical mind. The last one, the last one of these passages uh, is, uh, is characterized by the discovery of the phonetic alphabet and writing. Two is fundamental to put outside, to put uh, in the in, um, to describe exactly what, till this moment, humans have all in their mind. Architecture carried out in that passage a very important and a very important um, task. Because for the first time, as you have so, for the first time, humans externalized the first steady external memory. This is the first moment in the history in which humans externalize the internal mind, internal mind and internal uh, thought, and they develop uh, along, along the previous period. According to McLeod, by so doing, it created a link between the oral, biologically based uh, memory and external storage system of his theoretical culture. In, in other terms, through design, symbolic ideas 
undertook a tangible form. There are another elements. There are another elements in favor of this idea, underlined by my, by McLeod. It seems not fortuitous, as Shant is studying uh, at the origin of the width and discovered at Karakadag, 30 kilometers away from the site of Gobekli, discovered the original source of some of our oldest cultivated grains. So recent DNA analysis has shown that this is where modern wheat was first domesticated. Well, while uh, the idea that architecture could have set up differently the mine, fostering the Neolithic jump, another question arises. How architecture and its uh, special organization could so strongly affect the brain? We are seated on the circular benches, as you saw previously. Our shoulders lean against the, the inner face of the wall, seeing the two big vertical totem fixed up in the middle of the circles with their carved uh, images and goodness, bulls and animals. It works as a, an external device adopted by humans to transfer their intimate emotional sheen a projection of inner states in artificial environment. This was a ritual place where the designed shapes assumed the role of consciousness. Its ritual is depicted through bodies in movement. Its essence and meaning joined in an external setting as a stable and eternal memory. Signs that moment that architecture will always be available for humans to strengthen the same essence that triggered its design. When you build a scenario, so consequently it forms your mind. Another point enormously important in that vision about the role of human settlement is genuinely consistent, this is at the point, with the new models of perception, developed in the last decades by neuroscience. To work on this new passage, we need to come back also before the Neolithic Revolution, more than two million years before. Why? Because we must understand where come from the emotions, those emotions. The emotions were required to be externalized in the shape of architecture. When the Australopithecus arrived to stand up uh, on two legs, uh, Homo erectus' evolutive trajectory reached a turning point, particularly about the mind evolution. Rodolfo Linas, uh, a Colombian neuroscientist of the New York University, wrote a book, uh, Eye of the Vertex, around the progressive refinement of the relationship linking body movements with its neural maps. In the brain cortex, signals coming from the sensory system became slowly more integrated. Visual with tile, the balance of the musculoskeletal system with the hearing, so on. This constant refinement and integration, permitting precise control of the movements Meantime, nourished the memory and imagination and the ability to recover and simulate in advance different scenarios of the body gestures into the space, but not only. In that long temporal phase, two million years, our ancestors had not developed the voice. Our larynx will be relocated on this final position only with the Homo sapiens. Now it is uh, it's more, more easy, it's easier to grasp the reach of the mimetic phase evoked by Marilyn Donald. Body gestures start to communicate meanings, embedding in fundamental elements for our reasoning, emotions, not the basic emotion, 
not the basic emotion, already shared with many other animals. But the background bodily emotions precisely do refine it along with the bodily gesture improvement. Nowadays, many linguists and neuroscientists like uh, George Rakoff, Mark Johnson, uh, Vittorio Gallese, since the last 80th, underlines as also the origin of our conceptual thought is derived from the broad presence of emotional meaning in the body posture and movement. From a set of primary emotion, seven primary emotion, intensely biologically regulated, widely studied by Jak Pangsep, along with the mimetic phase, humans enriched them with more refined background emotion, as Antonio Damasio would have called later the subtle physiological modification of the homeostatic balance. A constitutive part of the more complex sensory, sensory motor network of physiological changes differently mixed for each body gesture. So our erectus and chestus, developing a body language, crowded their mind with emotions, concepts, and minds. The complexity of their background required to externalize the, the knowledge of the on the environment, in the environment. Rituals strengthened the groups, asking to be transformed in special shapes. Realizing this marvelous tool in the architecture of Gobekli, for example, they give themselves with enormous power. Architecture, so, modified their minds uh, terrifically. The gutters and hunters became farmer. The cities were at horizon. Rituals and behaviors have already had, have always had, sorry, from the inception an awaited emotion. To gather the group in circle, focusing on death, brought a focus also on the birth the entire life and its meaning, opening the door to the first spiritual moments. So rituals correlated emotions embedded in different patterns of action, always involving space, produced different architectural scenarios, modifying our mind, maybe without the minimal awareness. History of architecture, from my point of view, could also be read as the history of the way emotion has shaped rituals through many architectural disguises. The target was the attunement of human expectation with the experience of space. The attunement of human expectation with the experience of space. For the simple reason that from the very inception, the architecture was exactly its task. To trigger, to trigger this coupling. Architecture and the body movement is composed in sequential shape. In sequential shape by more units and more micro body statement. Well, in the Gibson, in the James Gibson book, uh, the ecological approach to the visual perception, he assumed that. Uh, the term affordances to describe the way through which the settings are configured to respond to animal and the human motor programs in a mutual correspondence among gestures and shape. In the same period, in the same period in, uh, in Parma, Giacomo Rizzolati was searching how the brain could control the body movement. During an experiment, uh, they discovered the sensory motor cortex was activated, not only when the monkey was performing the action, but also when the monkey simply was seeing someone else making the same action. Recently, the outcomes of mirror systems uh, 
The way with which uh, the brain simulates gestures has also been recognized in artworks and in space. So, concluding, it has been known as that architectural composition can or cannot trigger potential action. It seems the demonstration as James Gibson theory of affordances is entirely consistent with the approach of MacLeod about the Neolithic revolution. Space triggers a potential pattern of action for the simple reason that the architecture originated by, by the projection of body gestures and rituals. Along with architecture, we search in the environment the proper answer to an internal demand, emotional demand. For each one of the different human experiences, we seek the appropriate architecture to us, the Gibsonian, as the metaphorical affordances. Nowadays, we gradually lost the attention to the emotional complexity of the human experience. The social and economic costs of this misleading approach to the design are huge. We spend more or less 90% of our entire life inside buildings. If we are not able to emotionally couple with the context wrapping our bodies, we must activate our cognitive system to manage the unbalance produced. This effort has a cost, a mental fatigue that progressively increases stress. If it is prolonged, it affects the relationship with other people, with our attention, memory, and learning. So from the very beginning, architecture has always been the petrified expression of interior demands, as it also should be in the future. Developing software through algorithms or our aims have to be linked with the enormous richness of this mind-body-space relationship, leaving apart the impossible attempt to digitally duplicate it. I hope.